My name is Revati Falke and I'm going to talk to you about the interface between climate change, natural disasters and their combined impacts on human health. Now let's begin a little bit with understanding what exactly hazards are and when do they become events and when is it that you call them disasters. Hazards are naturally occurring phenomenon which basically do have the potential to affect human uh, uh, populations and communities but they may or may not necessarily do so. Extreme weather events are basically uh, a value of a weather or climate variable above or below a threshold value near the upper or lower ends of the range of observed values of that variable. So basically, unless these events are extremes, they are not of concern to us. Even if they are extreme, they become relevant to us only when they meet vulnerable populations. So vulnerabilities essentially have to meet the um, natural hazard for a disaster to occur. Now, for any event to be classified as a disaster, although there is mutual consensus of what aspects should be included, the main message is that it has to necessarily be over and beyond the coping capacity of the population which is affected, necessitating a response either from the subnational, national, or even the international levels. How does climate change affect or aggravate the situation? Necessarily by aggravating the hydraulic cycle. Now, the faster it is, of course, the, the, more, the, impact, the more the events that, that we see. It. Although there is limited to medium confidence in the contribution of climate change to natural disasters, we cannot at this stage exclude its role. Is there evidence uh, of the increase in the um, number of natural disasters? Plenty. If we look at this graph, then we see that in the last 30 years, not only the frequency and the intensity, but also the geographical distribution, the duration and the timing of natural disasters in all continents of the world is being on the rise. And that's not a surprise, because if you look at the uh, classification of natural disasters as per the Center for Research on Epidemiology of Disasters, all except the geophysical disasters are directly or indirectly influenceable by changes in weather and climate. So who is at the highest risk when we talk about the impacts of natural disasters? It's Asia as a continent. And not just because they house the maximum population in the world, but it's also because the maximum number of uh, natural disasters in the last 30 years have occurred in Asia, almost 40% in this continent. If you look at the type of disasters, then over 70% of the disasters in the last 30 years are either meteorological or hydrological, again, very closely influenced by the changes in weather and climate. What are then the health impacts of these natural disasters? Of course, it's mortality. So when you talk about mortality, it's almost 2 million deaths that we have witnessed in the last uh, 30 years and over 6 million injured, giving us a ratio of 1 is to 3. This is very relevant for planning of relief and rehabilitation programs that for every dead person, we have three living people for whom we need to kind of account for in terms of search capacities and so on. Now, the deaths from natural disasters are also unequally distributed with Asia bearing the maximum brunt of the mortality that is seen. Now, due to primary failures and secondary failures of systems in, in the immediate aftermath of disasters, you also see a range of uh, uh, health impacts in terms of morbidity. So, of course, the transmission of both epidemic and endemic diseases is affected. Not just that, you also see its impacts on chronic diseases because of interruption of the health treatments and so on and so forth. Now, apart from the uh, chronic and acute conditions, you also have to keep in mind the mental health impacts that are seen in this population. And this is important because mental health impacts have been uh, seen to last for almost two years beyond the event, which basically mandates a long-term care for these, for these populations. Now, apart from the physical and the mental health impacts, we also have a range of other public health concerns when we talk about natural disasters, which includes human rights violations, sexual and gender-based violence in these populations. And the other big concern that we have is displacement of populations. So internal displacement of populations has been uh, seen for, for uh, many years now and what we are expecting to see now more is also environmental refugees, so forced migration of populations because of environmental uh, changes in their living areas. Now apart from the health impacts, 
the we also need to take into account the health systems impacts of natural disasters because the capacity of the health system to respond to the impacts will essentially determine the, uh, how complex or how um, long the impacts last on the population so these basically include primary failures of health uh, system such as infrastructure damage collapsing of hospitals which basically limits the ability of the healthcare system to deliver care when it is most needed the other thing is secondary failures which basically include a lack of surge capacity or burnout both physical and mental of the health staff which is at the front line of dealing with the health impacts of natural disasters now droughts are a very special case it's sitting on the fence of both natural disasters as well as complex emergencies and if you look at historically most of the civil conflicts have been preceded by a period of drought in most of the countries now given its impact on both the availability of food uh, and water uh, it is basically driving uh, the rates of mal the prevalence of malnutrition in the world today and it is in a way reversing the gains which the world has made in reducing malnutrition globally in the last 20 years now when we are talking about dealing with the health and the health systems impact of natural disasters some of the things that we need to keep in mind is the challenges that health scientists face chief amongst them is that disasters are essentially acute in nature and the health needs of the populations are more dynamic and more rapidly evolving when we are talking about climate change it's of course more longer term view that is required and also time series data which can help us in establishing the pathways in which climate change is affecting health and also validating or attributing or quantifying these impacts uh, on the human populations the other thing is that health impacts can never be viewed as isolated impacts we necessarily need to take into account the social socio the socio economic and the demographic impacts that are also there on these populations while, when dealing it so assessments most definitely and essentially have to be integrated when we are talking about understanding the impacts in a holistic way how can we proceed from here of course to reduce the vulnerability of the population and increase their adaptive capacity the choices that we really have are basically to reinstate the population to its pre disaster state which is relief and rehabilitation or we use disasters as opportunities to to develop these societies and make them more resilient to the future impacts of both natural disasters and climate change i personally believe that we need to move from the lrrd the linking relief rehabilitation to development concept to linking adaptation preparedness prevention to relief rehabilitation and development and in a way we need to appreciate that health systems in these societies are facing moving targets so one year it is the climate change impacts which are more severe and the next year probably the population is facing more of a natural disaster so essentially strengthening health systems to simultaneously combat the health impacts of both climate change and natural disasters is a zero regret strategy and probably the most pragmatic way forward thank you very much